Axiom is a mod that's been helping us create amazing things inside of Minecraft, from massive floating islands to a hacko inspired dragon. And when it comes to painting, we have many different tools and techniques that we can learn and master to create gradients, shadows, and textures in no time. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you different ways of painting this house with Axiom, going from easy to hard, so we can see the results of those techniques, and you can decide which one you need to use for your own creations. First of all, we need to enter the editor mode, for which we are going to press right shift on the keyboard. Everything we will be learning today will be done within this mode, so learn how to navigate through it and take some time to feel comfortable with the way it works if you haven't already. Now, let's say we want to paint the diamond blocks with andesite. The easiest way to do that is dragging the block in, for which we need to click and hold the block from here all the way into the diamonds. That is going to automatically replace all the diamond blocks for andesite. If we go ahead and do the same for the lapis blocks and use something like tough bricks, we can see that only the line from underneath will be replaced and not the one on the top. That's because they are disconnected. This method will only replace the blocks of the same type that are connected with each other. Another way of doing this is by using the magic select tool from up here and selecting what we want to paint first. For instance, we can select the gold roof with right click and the tough edge from underneath. Now if we drag a block like oxidized copper for example, we can see that both will be changed at the same time, regardless of them being disconnected or being different blocks. In the same way, while this is selected, we can use the paint tool from up here. This tool will paint following the shape and size of the brush we select, so let's use this and reduce the size of the brush to turn the bottom edge back to tough. Right now it might be a bit difficult to see the utility of this method of selecting and painting, but it has some useful advantages that we will see later on. Moving to the next one, we can begin to incorporate gradients into our build, and there are a couple different ways of doing this. The first one is with the Painter tool. Here the mode is by default set to Active Block, but we can change this now to Clipboard or Gradient. So let's go ahead and select Gradient. Now, a few options will appear. Here you can choose the blocks that compose your gradient. Let's keep a similar scheme as before and choose Copper Blocks. To show how this works, let's paint on the wall behind. If we click and drag, we can see how this gradient tool works. It will paint with the first block of the list on the center and transition to the others towards the edges. But this will depend on a few things. First, the order of the gradient. We can click and drag to switch the positions around and notice how the result is different. Second, it will depend on the brush size and the shape, with the bigger brush having a wider center. You can also play around with the different shapes to see what different effects you can get. The third thing is the Merge Strokes option. So let's say we have this line painted over here. With the option ticked on, if we draw another one crossing it, this will attempt to merge and smooth the edges between them. With the option turned off, we can see the clear difference with the second stroke coming over on top of it. The fourth and last thing will be the interpolation method. The one we've used so far is nearest but you can also choose Linear, which will add some noise to the edges of the brush, or Bezier, which will add even more noise. On top of that Linear and Bezier, both have the option to soften the edges of the stroke, where with soft edges, the last block of the gradient will also have the noisiness. And Bezier allows you to also select an inner radius, where the mixing of blocks or the noise will not apply. So. Let's say that now we want to use this to paint the roof of the house. Then we will need to select the roof first with the magic selection, and then use the painter tool on it. This might be a bit hard to control, especially on a small scale like this, but generally, selecting a brush size comparable to the scale of our build, and with the merge strokes option, you should be able to achieve a smooth and cool looking gradient. And remember that you can always undo with Ctrl C and try again a few times until you get something that you like. For the walls, instead of this tool, we could use the Gradient Painter tool, which is specifically designed for gradients. And we can see that it has some options that are the same as before. So let's choose a stone gradient for this, going from stone bricks to light grey concrete powder. 
The way this tool works is a bit different. We first need to right-click in two different points to define the gradient size and direction. So if we right-click here, we will see a line appearing with a number that tells us the amount of locks. Then, we right-click again, but this time hold the button and drag around to paint with the gradient. You can see that if I go beyond the edges where I clicked, it will paint only with the last blocks of the gradient. If we don't want it to do that, we can tick the option Clamp to Edge, and it won't paint beyond the points we selected. And of course, that works in every direction. As I said before, the size of the line matters, so if you want your gradient to change blocks faster, you will have to draw a shorter line whereas for a slower change you will need a larger line. The next option is the shape of the gradient. We've been using the default that is plain, but if we change it to sphere, then the gradient will be calculated in a sphere with the center on the first point we click and the radius being the second point, just like that. And the last option is called locking, and it's a very useful one. Let's suppose we want to paint this wall with a gradient, but for some reason we have a hole right here in the middle of our path. If we try to draw a line, we can see that it will go away as soon as we try to cross over the hole. So what do we do in this case? Well, that's when we can go to this option and lock position 1. Now, the first point we select will remain there and this will allow us to cross over the gap and draw our gradient line as usual. However, that's not the only use case. You can also utilize this to paint different gradients with different sizes and directions, starting from the same point. And if you want to get rid of the locked positions, you can do so by pressing Ctrl C once, and then just select your new point. On top of that, we can also lock both positions, 1 and 2. For instance, in the case of these walls, Let's select the diamond blocks first. I will use a linear interpolation and do a gradient that goes lighter at the bottom and darker at the top. With the locked positions in, we can determine the gradient size and orientation, start painting and then rotate the camera to see another side of the build, but still continue painting with the exact same gradient. And that way we can make sure that we don't miss any of the blocks. To finish it off, we can set the lapis blocks to tough bricks and move to the next one. Now we will learn how to use the best tool this mod has to offer when it comes to gradients and shading. Let's suppose we want to simulate a light that hits our build from this side. If we would use the gradient painter from before, we'd need to paint this edge with a lighter color and get progressively darker as we move away. And don't get me wrong, this is still a great way of doing it. However, now we have a new tool that allows us to achieve that effect with more precision and in an easier way. Up here under Operations we can select Auto Shade, and we will get this box opening up with a bunch of settings. Before getting into the most important of those, let me show you how this operation works. The first step is to select the thing that you want to shade, the diamond walls in our case. The second step is to replace the blocks for the brightest color from the palette that you want, in my case, Calcite. The third and most important step is to select the type of sun or lightning. By default it is set to player position, so if I'm looking at the build from here and press Auto Shade, this will place the brightest colors in the blocks of the build that are facing towards me, and the darkest ones on the opposite side. Another option here is to have custom positions, which will allow you to place more than one light source with different intensities. You just need to move to the position that you want and add a new one, which will be represented by these small yellow spheres. And the last one is Sun Angle, where you can set a custom angle orientation for the sun. For now, let's set a single light source here and click Auto Shade. We can notice that this will do a good job at shading with the orientation and everything, but it will be a bit too noisy, with too many different blocks, which in most of the cases is not what we want. That's where we need to start tinkering around with the options from below. An important one is Dithering. And without getting into the technicalities, this will control the noisiness of the shading. So if we reduce it to zero, it will yield a smoother effect. And it will get noisier as we increase it. Around 0.05 is what works for me in most of the cases, but feel free to play around. Global illumination will make everything brighter if you increase it or darker if you reduce it. And down here you have a bunch of boxes that are self-explanatory. But to reduce the amount of random blocks that the operation will use, I recommend having everything on. So now, 
the result will be way smoother. But still many times this operation might include blocks that you don't want in your builds for whatever reason. For instance, let's do this with a base of stone. The result is good, but let's imagine that I need to build this in survival, so we don't want the netherite blocks or the bedrock in there. The way to fix that is, without losing the selection, press Ctrl R. That will open the replace mode. Here you can select the blocks that you want to replace from, for instance bedrock, and change it to something of a similar color like basalt. So far we've used an automatic palette, but we could also choose a custom one, which is great because you will have complete control over the blocks that the operation will use. For instance, we can select here the same copper palette as before, but let's suppose that we want something different. Choosing the blocks for a palette is not always an easy task, so let me show you a cool way of doing that within Axiom. First, you need to grab the box selection and go to a clear area of your world. Draw a large box in the air and press Enter. If done correctly, you should see the yellow outline. Now go to Operations and under here click on Generate Color Field. This will create a map with the different blocks in the game. So now we can use the ruler tool to draw a line between the blocks that we want on our palette. For instance in our case, from oxidized copper to the regular one. And we can then just follow the line grabbing the blocks closer to it as we move along to form our palette. Then I recommend placing the blocks down, make some modifications considering textures and then stack them up a few blocks. That way you can see from a distance if they blend well or if there's something off. In this case, I like it and it's very similar to the one we had before, but without using the color fill, I did not think of jungle planks as an addition to this gradient. And here, to accentuate the bright orange even further, I will add orange concrete as well. Now we just drag every block from our gradient into the custom palette of the auto shading function, and once that's done, click auto shade to paint the roof with the same light direction. We can change the lapis again to finish it off and move to the next one. Gradients are amazing, but sometimes we want to add texture to our builds. That's where the Noise Painter tool will come in handy. There are a lot of options here, but only a few are important for what we want. As for every paint tool, we have the brush shape and radius, and this time we have a new parameter here called Scale. This is the most important one. When we increase it, we will see in the preview down here how the black and white blobs get larger. That's the noise pattern that we will be using to paint. So if we click on the wall, we can see it being painted with the blocks we selected. And we also have a bunch of different patterns we can use. So how do we use this to create texture? Let's first select the palette. We can grab it directly from the previous one or use the color field from before. Now let's select the diamond blocks. I will hide the selection, which I have key binded to Ctrl T. And if we paint, we can see that the result is good, but there's nothing special about it. So what we need to do is to turn on the anisotropic option. This is the key, and it will allow us to adjust the scale of the noise pattern for each X, Y and Z direction separately. For instance, let's say we want to texture our build with a long dripping effect. Then we can increase the scale on the Y direction by quite a bit, and reduce the other two horizontal dimensions to something like two or three blocks. The preview should look something like this. So if we go ahead and paint now, we can very easily achieve a dripping texture, something we will see on a ruined or weathered structure. But that's not all. If we do the inverse and reduce the vertical or Y scale, but increase the horizontal ones, we will be able to paint our walls with a pattern that resembles bricks. And in particular, this is an effect that works better with the Voronoi edges or the worldly noise patterns. Again, adjust the scales to the size of the build, wall or floor that you want to texture, and we can do something similar here with the palette for the roof. So you can see how very easily we can get the structure painted in a way that gives it a unique feel. It might not be a perfect texture right away, but it's a great and quick start. So now let's move to the next and last one. Let's say that now we want to use the textures from the noise painter, but we also want it to follow a gradient or a shade direction. Well, that's when we need to get creative and start combining the different tools we learned before which is the reason why this is the most complex technique. We will begin by selecting the diamond blocks and going to Operations Auto Shade. Now let's select the custom palette going from white wool to grey. And at this scale, I wouldn't use more than two or three blocks. Set the custom position from where you want your light to hit the build, adjust the dithering to your preference and click Auto Shade. Make a few iterations if you need until you get something that you like. 
Now, we can use the color field we generated before to choose a palette. Something like this on the gray scale I think would work. So let's place it down and divide it in three different segments. So let's associate the white to these three blocks, the light gray to these other three, and the last ones for the gray wood. Now we can go to the noise painter, tick the anisotropic option and adjust the different scales to get a texture as we saw before. In this case, I want to go for the horizontal brick texture with the whirly noise pattern. I will try it a few times here first to make sure that I like how it looks. And now we can select the blocks of our palette, but using the segments that we divided before. Starting from the white, let's grab the three blocks. But if we paint, it will paint everything and we only want to affect the white wood. So we have two options here. The first one is magic selecting first, but this might be a bit tricky and leave a few blocks out depending on the shape of our build. So the safest option is to open the tool mask window here and drag the white wood block into the box. So now we can paint with the noise painter without the fear of missing any of the blocks. Then repeat the same process but for the other wool colors, always keeping the same noise pattern but changing the blocks of the palette and the ones on the tool mask. And now we just need to do the same for the grey wool to finish it off. This way you can get an effect on the walls that combines the shading with the texture. Now I will use the regular painter tool in gradient mode to quickly paint the roof. And as I said before, these are all great quick ways of texturing, especially when the builds get larger. But most of the time the results are not exactly what we had in mind, and we need to make small adjustments. For that, my recommendation is to use the painter tool, select active block and reduce the size of the brush to zero. Now it will only affect one block at a time, and it's a great way of making those small adjustments. We could still do this by hand in game, that's an option, but when we use the tool we can still select the blocks that we want with the middle click, we can paint more blocks faster, and most importantly we can undo our actions with Ctrl C, which is great for when we make mistakes. So basically you can use this to paint blocks as pixels and add that extra touch of personality to your builds like weatherization under the windows, shadows under the overhangs, or even to shape the gradients better. To finish the build, I went ahead and added some very simple details and decorations, mostly to the shapes of the windows and doors, and a chimney on the back. This is just to show you how most of the look and interest of this build was done with only the painting over some simple shapes. So the next time you have a flat wall and don't know what to do with it, maybe try one of these methods. And that's going to be everything from me today. As always, I hope you learned something new and useful with the video. This has been Carlton, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.